Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm looking at a classic Southern Railway loco from Hornby. This loco has been around for almost 10 years now and I thought because it's been so long since I last reviewed one of these I would update my review and give you a fresh look at it. I also wanted to look at this loco because technically it is a pre-grouping loco and yet Hornby have only ever released this in post-grouping liveries which could be a missed opportunity. So the locomotive is this, it is the S15 locomotive. And sure enough, this was not introduced to the Southern Railway as we see it here. This was an LSWR locomotive, a pre-grouping loco, like I say. Now I suspect the reason that Hornby have never, to my knowledge, done an LSWR version of this model is because in the 1920s Richard Mansell did some modifications to the class which according to the photos changed the appearance of the loco quite considerably. So if this model, if this tooling depicts the locos after those modifications in the final batches that would explain why it would be a bit improper for Hornby to come back and release this in an LSWR livery. But we do live in a world where Hornby can take an existing loco like the B17 for instance and do a new body for it, a streamlined body in that case. And with pre-grouping locos being as popular as they are these days, hopefully that will be a possibility with this. But today we're going to take a look back at this loco, we'll see what it's like, see whether it still meets modern standards or not, and see whether this is a loco that we want to see come back. The latest RRP I could find for this loco was £155.99. That was a few years ago, I believe, so that explains why it's a bit cheaper than you'd expect it to be today. And when last available at the retailers, this thing was available for around £100 or just a bit less. I paid £99 for mine, which again, by modern standards, seems very good indeed. Anyway, I remember this being quite a decent loco, so let's take a fresh look and let's see how it shapes up. Right, so as you can see, we've got a nice image of the model on the front of the box. It does look very smart in the southern black, but I always look at this thing and wish that I had this in a fully lined LSWR livery. I believe Hornby have produced this in a green before, a southern green, which does somewhat resemble the old LSWR livery. It's got lining and such, but it's not the full fat pre-grouping version, is it? So I've still got my fingers crossed for that. Anyway, I need to stop going on about the pre-grouping version. Let's have a look at this one. If I show you the end of the box, you can see the product code for mine is R3411. It is Southern Railway, it's an S15 class loco, and the number is 827. This is a DCC ready loco, and I believe it has an eight pin DCC socket in its tender. If I show you the back of the box, you can see that an early classification for this loco classified it as an A. And then in the center here, we've got a brief history on the class. If you'd like to pause and read that, feel free to, although I will give you a potted history in just a sec. And then on the far end of the box, we've got some drawings from Hornby themselves, dated 2014. So next year, this will be around 10 years old. Where has that time gone? <laughs> it's quite scary. But that's pretty much all there is to see on the box. So with that, let's get this out and let's find out what this is like. Here we go. Should get a, a good look at it straight away. There you go, nestled inside its blister pack. Yeah, it's a smart looking loco, isn't it? And uh, even though the livery is simple, I do like the sort of yellow and green numbering and lettering. It does add a bit to the plain black, doesn't it? Okay. All right, so we've got some paperwork. It's probably just your standard Hornby booklet. Yes, it is. So this is for the S15 class. And let's open it up and have a little look. So it's very, very basic. You've got a bit about lubrication here. It's just literally the crank pins and the axles. Accessories, there are lots of accessories with this loco, as you can see. You've got steps, cylinder drain cocks, etc. 
body removal, yeah, it's quite easily done. A couple of screws, pretty standard. Connecting the loco and tender together, obviously you've got a drawbar and then a plug for your electrics, so that's fairly standard. And yeah, there is the 8-pin decoder socket in the tender where there is room for a decent sized speaker. And then on the back, we've got just a bit about the brake rods. And the brake rods look quite elegant, I always think, on these. Interesting shape to those. All right, so with that, let's open up the blister pack and let's have a look at the accessories that are included. So it's quite a hefty bag full this time, and here it is. So yeah, the cylinder drain cocks look very fine, and they are painted, which is good to see. You've got that quite elegantly shaped brake rigging that I was talking about. There you go. You've got a NEM coupling for the front of the loco, which you can fit if you like, and then various buffer beam details, such as pipe work, etc. Seems to be some steps in there as well. So you could really enhance the loco if you wanted to fit some of that stuff. But let's see what the loco looks like straight out of the box. And yeah, the packaging's weird on this one. You open it down in the bottom corner for some reason, and then the whole top flips upwards. Right, let's have a look at the finish then. This is a few years old now, so is it going to match other locos in terms of its finish? Um, well, I guess this plastic had a bit of oil or grease on it, actually, because <laughs> the top of the loco looks a little bit greasy. So let me just wipe that. There we go. No harm done, I don't think. All right. So, yeah, the finish is quite plasticky. I think a modern loco would be noticeably different from this because it would have a higher quality satin finish. This finish, though, is fairly typical of Hornby locos from sort of five to ten years ago or whatever. So it's no big surprise but uh, it doesn't look bad by any means, does it? Right, let's lift this up then and see what this is like. So the, the weight of the Loco is actually not too bad. There's not a lot of metal work on here. The running plate is just made of plastic, as is the boiler and the smoke box and the firebox and the cab. Yeah, it's mostly a plastic body. I think it's mainly the chassis that is made of metal, but the weight doesn't seem absolutely terrible. Also, another really interesting feature that I like a lot about these Locos is the tender, because this is a bogey tender, and that's a very rare feature on a British Loco. In fact, I've only got a small handful of Locos in the collection with a bogey tender, and they're all very similar to this. They are the Southern Railway 460s, the N15, the Lord Nelson, and of course this, the S15. So these Southern Locos really have some of the biggest tenders of any British Locos, which is cool. But there you have it, yeah, it's a very smart Loco. As you can tell, the level of detail is pretty impressive, even on first glance. And I will give you a much closer look at the level of detail in just a second. But for now, let's have a bit of a background on the S15 in real life, and then we'll take that much closer look. The S15, as I say, started life in 1920, when the first of 20 examples was introduced to the LSWR to the design of Robert Urey. The design was largely based on Urey's previous work, the H15, which is not one that we talk about very much, and of course the N15, which we do have here in 00 scale, the latter being introduced just a few years prior in 1918. The N15 and S15 were very similar indeed, except the S15 had smaller driving wheels to make it better suited for hauling freight, although the S15s did occasionally haul passenger trains too. Further S15s were then built by the Southern Railway in 1927, when 15 more examples were added to the fleet, bringing the total number at the time up to 35. Richard Mansell oversaw this second batch, and he added a few modifications of his own, which included a boiler pressure increase from 180 to 200 psi, among a few other alterations. Then, almost 10 years later, the Southern Railway commissioned yet another batch of locos. Ten more members of the class were added, bringing the grand total up to 45. The class was revered for being an excellent loco for goods work, capable of hauling heavy night express goods trains with ease. After their fifth decade of service, very long serving locos these, the S15s were gradually withdrawn between 1962 and 1966, with all but six of them scrapped. Of the six remaining examples, I can only find two of them which seem to be currently in operating condition. So there you have it, a close look at Hornby's beautiful S15. 
and almost 10 years old or not, this is still a fantastic model in my opinion. The level of detail and the finesse in this model still really lives up to modern standards, particularly for the price that these used to be, 100 to 150 quid, this seems like a great loco indeed. And even if this was brought back today with the price adjusted for inflation, I still think this would be a great value loco. Obviously Hornby usually adjust their prices beyond the rate of inflation, so it's a bit irrelevant, but still you get the point. The Loco is not quite so modern in its flashy features, it doesn't have any LEDs or pre-fitted speaker or anything like that, and if this was brought back today I'd expect the finish maybe to be a little bit better because it is quite flat and plasticky, but generally, yeah, the Loco's details and features are absolutely fine. The Loco is however quite plasticky, the body is obviously plastic and the finish reflects that, and also the running plate is plastic as well. Now visually that doesn't make too much of a big difference because as you can see the running plate is perfectly straight but of course the plastic nature of the Loco's body does have an effect on the weight because Loco and Tender only weigh in at 300 grams which makes this the lightest of the three Southern 460s that Hornby produce. Lighter than the N15 and lighter than the Lord Nelson. That does make sense because this is the smallest of the three, but a bit more metal on the body would have made this more impressive from that point of view. But still, let's take a closer look at what this Loco has to offer. Because it's a plain southern black, there's not much to see in terms of livery except the running number on the side of the cab, which is nicely applied, as you can tell. And the only other splash of colour we have on this is the pipework. So you've got the pipework under the cab, which again, for 10 years old, fairly complex really. And then you've also got some pipework on the side of the boiler and the reverser rod here and the associated mechanism at the other end that is separately painted, but just made of plastic. And because the valve gear crosses from the top of the running plate down to the bottom, there is a bit of a discrepancy here where the rods below the running plate are made of metal and they have a metal finish. And then you go to this sort of painted plastic finish up on top, which is a little bit noticeable. It's not a big deal or anything, but it is just something that I notice. And there's something similar going on with the safety valves. These safety valves are actually made of metal but they are painted, so they don't have that metallic finish, which I think is a pity, but it does mean that they match the painted plastic, which is meant to look like metal, in terms of finish. So you do get a more unified look where that's concerned. And the whistle on the front of the cab here, I believe that is just plastic, but it is a very fine piece. Let's start looking at some of the details then. So you've got a relatively detailed buffer beam, even without the extra details fitted. This includes metal sprung buffers. Let's demo the buffers. Yeah, look at that. Fantastic. Sprung buffers. You've got a pre-fitted vacuum pipe and also coupling hook, although there is no screw link coupling. Couldn't find one in the accessories bag to fit onto this Loco. So maybe that's something that the Loco is lacking a little bit. You've also got separately fitted lamp brackets on the Loco already and quite some detail around the smoke box area. The smoke box itself being pretty detailed as well with the separately fitted lamp brackets and handrails on it. You've got some very baby little smoke deflectors on here which are some of the smallest I think I've ever seen and these make the Loco look a lot different than it did in the LSWR days where the photos I found showed the class without smoke deflectors which makes them look quite a bit different. Along the boiler you've got the separately fitted wire handrail which is nice and straight and well applied. The running plate, despite being made of plastic, does have a fair bit of detail on it, as you can see, which looks fantastic. The valve gear looks very fine as well. There's even some nice cast sections to it, which look very, very good indeed. The wheels are also well done. You've got the moulded plastic centres with the metal tyre, and therefore you've got much more realistic looking axles there, and some good detail on the wheel face itself. And even the chassis has detailing to it. You can see there are rivets and pipes on the chassis itself, which is awesome. And then the cab itself has some nice separately painted window frames, which I think look really good. The glazing here is good and flush too. And then the highlight of the entire model is the cab. This cab really rivals what Hornby are producing today. You've got fully painted gauges, 
separately fitted controls such as the reverser and the regulator. The water gauges have very intricate painting on them. Obviously the back wall and the sides of the cab have the cream paint on them. The little surfaces in there are painted separately and you've even got little details away from the back head which are also painted. Truly, truly one of the greatest cabs ever and it makes such a difference. This is quite a plain looking loco so it really needs that detailed cab so that when you really start looking at the loco you think ah yeah there is a lot of detail here. The tender is similarly interesting really. You've got again quite a plain black finish though the southern lettering is done nicely. Like I said earlier on this is a bogey tender so we've got bogies on here which are very detailed actually even without the brake rigging fitted. So you've got the axle boxes and the springs which look great. Some very very fine moulding on those which looks good. You've got the gigantic coal bunker here, the coal load being a separately fitted part. Lots of detail around the front of the tender including this handle which is separately painted. And then around the back you've got a similar level of detail with another painted running number, more separately fitted lamp brackets, a separately fitted vacuum pipe and a slightly different, slightly smaller buffer design on the buffer beam which is painted red. And then in terms of coupling you've got the NEM tension lock which is fitted into a NEM pocket connected to the rear bogey. So that should eliminate any issues relating to the long wheelbase of the tender connected to the bogey not the tender body which is smart. So there you have it, what a gorgeous, gorgeous loco. It is relatively plain because of its livery, but the level of detail, in my opinion, is very, very impressive. I particularly like the cab. I think that is the greatest feature on this loco. So that is what the loco looks like. Now let's move on. Let's have a look at the mechanism. Let's see how this loco runs. And of course, let's hook this up to a nice southern themed freight train and let's see how it gets on around the track. So there she is down onto the track, the lovely Hornby S15, and I will show you her performance in just a second. But first of all, let's talk a bit about the mechanism, which on the whole is really, really good, I think. First of all, you've got full pickups on the tender wheels, which means that you've got eight extra pickups on this loco. Add the three pickups per line that you've got to the loco, and you've got seven pickups per line which is just amazing i can't see this thing ever cutting out it still has the old-fashioned drawbar and plug assembly as we saw earlier on the instructions that's a little bit dated but hornby are only just starting to move away from that now so no surprise that this has got it the base keeper plate is held on by a series of screws and if you undo those you will see that the base keeper plate is fully removable so that you can clean the pickups and also oil the axles You've got proper turned brass bearings on the axles, which is a fantastic feature. Obviously, I like bearings. They do make a big difference. And then you've got the gear, which drives the rear axle, which is quite interesting. Body removal is fairly easy, although the front body screw is covered up by the bogey. So you have to kind of, well, you don't have to, but it's much, much easier to remove the bogey in order to get to that screw. One screw at the front, one screw at the back, and the body is removed. The chassis is a die-cast metal one, it's where most of the Loco's weight comes from, and here is the motor, which is a five-pole motor. Now, this motor, unfortunately, while it should be good on paper, and I have known these motors to perform well, particularly here in the S15, these motors do cause problems, and the issues with this motor are quite well documented. It is the same motor that Hornby used in their new 9F, and as you know, I didn't have a good experience with it there, and also in that B12 that I had problems with. And in fact, the motor I have here in this S15 is not the original one. This is a cheap replacement I bought from China, which is exactly the same thing, by the way. The original one didn't fail outright, but it was just starting to get a little bit sluggish. So I decided to try one of these cheap Chinese motors to see if it was the same thing. And sure enough, it was. As you can see, I am down one flywheel. This motor would have had two flywheels originally. So when I quoted the weight to you earlier on, you can add another five to 10 grams if you like. And and the pulling power tests I do later on, I did add the extra 10 grams to the loco just to simulate the weight with that flywheel. It still has one flywheel fitted though because that's how the motor couples to the drivetrain, so that gives you an idea what that would have been like. And then the gauge comes in at 14.2 to 14.3 millimeters back to back, which is fairly close to the standard. 
So yeah, 10 years old or not, the mechanism here is fantastic. And that shouldn't come as too much of a surprise because Hornby have been building top quality mechanisms from about the year 2000. The only question mark is over that motor. And like I say, it's not a terrible motor by design, on paper, those motors should be great. It's just in practice, in many cases, they are not, in my experience. Poor torque and quite sluggish, but I'll show you how this one runs in just a second. In terms of pulling power, the tractive effort here was 0.36 newtons, which translates to around 23 coaches on straight and level track. And to test that, I've set up a big rake of wagons. Well, it's fairly big. There's probably at least 20 there, plus some box vans in the middle. So it's kind of a mixed train. Anyway, let's see what the performance is like. Let's give this Loco some juice. It has, of course, been running, and even the new motor has been running, because I did that a few years ago. So here it goes. Let me show you the performance. As you can see, quiet and smooth, and it's just gone over some express points there, and, of course, it did not cut out because there's so many pickups. Well, there we go. It is quite a slow Loco. In fact, it's slower than I remember. I'll do a run past at 50 for you. So that's half speed. I thought this Loco was faster than that back in the day. So whether the motor is starting to go funny again, the replacement motor that is, um, I don't know. But it does seem to be performing okay, so I'm not going to rush to replace it this time. Uh, let's have a look and see what the torque is like, because that is often an issue with these motors. So let me do what I usually do. Put my finger in front of the buffers, turn it up to 50. And no, I wouldn't say that's much of a problem at all. That's turning fairly nicely. Um, slowing down a little bit with a load, but not too much. Right, how is the crawl then? Let's do this. Ease it up very gently. I seem to remember it was quite good, but let's see if it still is. Here we go. Turning up, turning up. We're going. But I saw it move. Let's go a bit further. There we go. Oh, a bit more. Yeah, so there you go, moving very, very gradually and fairly smoothly as well. I'm not going to criticise this too much if it does any cogging, because obviously I've removed one of the flywheels in order to replace the motor. And uh, I did wonder whether the extra weight on the motor shaft caused by the flywheels was why the motors were struggling, so I didn't really want to put that extra flywheel back on. But having said that, it's not really that cocky anyway, is it? I would say it's reasonably smooth. Let's give it a bit more. A bit of a jump there, wasn't there? Let's try that again. But yeah, forwards, it's very smooth. Let's just see if it is backwards as well. Yeah, that's quite something, isn't it? And the linkage on this Loco is particularly nice. Yeah, I do love the motion on this one. Yeah, no, that is, that is smooth, isn't it? Yeah, smooth enough. So, yeah, lovely, lovely performer. Let's go then and attempt a coupling. Let's check that all of that works as it should. Here we go. Right, I'm going to try and keep this nice and smooth, if possible. Look at that, quite some control. Excellent, there we go. Right, forwards then. Let's go for a nice, gentle freight speed. So... I think that's probably not going to be far away from about 50 on this. That's 40. There we go. I would have said that looks pretty good. And as you can see on the level here, she is certainly able to haul quite a large freight train. Right, let me show you what else is going to be running today. Uh, in the sidings, I've got some other Southern Locos, but there is an odd one out. So if you can spot that and explain why it's an odd one out in the comments, I will pin the first comment to correctly do so. This is the N15, which is very similar to the S15. It's just got the larger driving wheels. It was more inclined for passenger work, this one. So I've got it with some Southern coaches. Really lovely loco, that one, Sir Levine. And then on the inside line, we have the latest addition to Hornby's range of Southern Region 460s. And that is the Lord Nelson class. And this came out much more recently than the S15, but it's actually no better in terms of features. It's only a little bit heavier, despite being much larger, still plastic construction. It does, however, have a better livery. I prefer the Southern Green because it's got the lining and such. Obviously, that's only a personal preference. There's nothing inaccurate about the Southern Black. I just prefer the Greens. Anyway, let's catch up with the S15, see how she's getting on with her freight. 
Okay, so here she comes, approaching Gordon's Hill. Reasonable length freight train. Let's see if there are any issues with the torque around the curves. Yeah, not really. Didn't see it slow down very much at all there. Considering what motor this loco is running, that's not too bad at all. And now most of the freight train is on the slight incline. And again, it's hardly slowing down at all. So the performance is actually really quite pleasing. And so is the Loco on the whole, really. Generally, this is a Loco that I would love to see Hornby bring back because it's really not that far from meeting modern standards, is it? Yes, I think the finish is a little bit plasticky, but to fix that on a new release, they wouldn't have to invest in the tooling or anything. As long as they decorated it using modern decoration techniques, the improved finish would be there without any investment. And yes, it doesn't have flashy features such as firebox LEDs or pre-fitted speakers. And sure, Hornby could add those if they wanted to, but I don't think it would be that necessary. As long as the price was right and as long as it wasn't too expensive, I'm sure this Loco could come back almost exactly as it is here today and be considered a perfectly modern and acceptable model. I really do like it. The big thing that I would love to see though would be for Hornby to tool up a body for the pre-grouping version of the S15. Obviously that would involve a little bit more investment but it is something I would love to see because a lot of the pre-grouping locos we've had to date have been the smaller and daintier ones. This would make for a significantly larger pre-grouping loco which is something I would love to see. Now. I suppose whether we will get that will depend on whether Hornby can reuse the chassis here. If this chassis is not suitable for whatever reason dimensionally, that's probably not something we're going to see because it would involve a complete fresh tooling. But if they could reuse this chassis to do a pre-grouping version of the S15, then yeah, maybe that is something we will see. And I would certainly buy it if they did it. But yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous loco running really nicely, as you can see. Let us have some ratings then for the Hornby S15. And as you can see by the ratings, this Loco is quite impressive. And I'm finding this quite a lot with some of the older Hornby Locos that I've been reviewing. They're a lot better than I'd kind of expect them or remember them to be given their age, very impressive. So the level of detail, I think if anything, I've been quite harsh here. I've given it four star. Obviously what it does really well is the little details such as the sprung buffers, the lovely lamp irons and the cab. Wow, that cab is absolutely amazing. It falls down a little bit on the finish, which I think is quite plasticky. It doesn't have any of the screw link couplings included, which more modern locos do. And it doesn't have any lighting or anything like that. And on their own, obviously, these minor criticisms are really just that, very minor. But together, they knock off a star for me. The performance is 4.5 star. Yeah, it's a very good and controlled loco. The speed is very sensible for a freight loco. It's Fairly powerful, I would say. The level of torque isn't quite as good as we normally see from Hornby, which is why I've knocked off half a star. But even with a moderate length freight train like this one, it seems to be able to handle it without slowing down too much. So overall, no major complaints here. The pulling power, because of the Loco's relative light weight, isn't amazing. 0.36 newtons or 23 coaches on straight and level track. That's pretty much as expected really given the Loco's weight. It is quite a bit less than the N15, which is only a little bit heavier. The mechanism for me is a four star. It's a tremendous mechanism. Loads of pickups, more than most Locos because you've got four tender wheels per side picking up as well as the three Loco wheels. You're never gonna get power interrupted with these, even on the dirtiest of tracks, so that's great. You've got the proper turned metal bearings on the axles, nice and serviceable base keeper plate where you can get the pickups off for cleaning them. And the five pole motor on paper is a good one and these can run well, but these are not great motors. In my experience, they haven't lasted very long and in many cases they can go faulty for no obvious reason really. So I've knocked off a star for that. Not a big fan of the motor and obviously I had to replace the motor in this one. For the time being, it does seem to be working okay though. The quality I've also given four star. Now, the one thing that did disappoint me about this was the plastic construction. Bit of die cast in the running plate or the body would have made this a real great quality feeling model. Having said that, the build quality is really high. There's quite a bit of complexity here, as we saw, and yet no visible glue or anything like that, no wonky parts. 
the build quality is really, really high. So I've given it four star, yeah, pretty good. Value for money then. Now you have to take this one with a pinch of salt because it's been a year or two since we've seen a new price for this Loco from Hornby. So the prices I have are a couple of years old at least. RRP £155.99. Typical retailer price seems to have been anywhere from about 100 to 150 pounds. Now by modern standards for a loco of this sort of quality, I think that's really, really good. Obviously it probably wouldn't get a five if Hornby brought this back today because I would at the very least expect the RRP to be around 200 now, looking at some of Hornby's other offerings. Uh, that obviously wouldn't be as good, but that's not something that's actually happened yet. So clearly I can't mark it down for that. Overall then, that is 8.37 out of 10. For a loco dating back almost 10 years now, I think that's pretty good going. It's just into the A grade realm now, so it does get a grade of A, and into the logbook it goes, and it is in fourth place, so top five at the moment, above the Hornby K1, which is another relatively old loco, and below the SD60E. Yeah, I'd forgotten how great this loco was, but if you see one at a good price, second hand, I can highly recommend it, and Hornby, bring this thing back. Well folks, that will just about do it for yet another review. Yet again, I find myself super impressed by what Hornby were doing 10 or more years ago. Yeah, it's a really good job, isn't it? And hopefully we do see this loco come back in some form, whether it be the pre-grouping one that I've been talking about or just in some nice southern liveries. Uh, it would be a shame if this loco never returned to the range because it is a quality one. But let me know down in the comments what you think about this one. Have you got one of these? What do you think about the mechanism and the motor? Have you had any issues? Let me know if so. And any other thoughts you've got on the model, please do share them with me. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again very, very soon. All right, cheers, folks. You take care.